forecast is for rain, rain and more rain. Him over there! Ah! The wind in the red top! Sunday afternoon at Manchester Airport, and check in supervisor Michael Shelbourne has an unexpected problem on the Tenerife flight. Things are getting heated. The flight's overbooked by. I believe it's seven now that it's overbooked. But there's not a lot we can do about it now, so. It's down to the tour operators sort them out to try and get them on another flight. They won't be happy. Um, it depends when the, other, the next flight will be as well. But anyway, it's out of my hands now, I'm off home. It's the tour operators who control the charter flight. This overbooking means the last nine passengers can't travel. It's not Avro's fault, but new employee Andy Scudder must deal with the fallout. There are no direct flights at all today. OK, so what are you offering as an alternative? Tuesday. Tuesday. Well, that's what, yeah, the, there was either the BA flight today via Madrid right. or wait until Tuesday, and that's not even guaranteed. That's only on availability. What does that mean, not guaranteed? Do you need to check about availability first. We need to check? No. Our, if you wanted oh, to see. go for Tuesday, we would check availability on right, Tuesday. Right, OK, so I suggest you check availability. Is that what you want me to do? Well, if that's the first alternative flight that you're offering... Right, OK. Lucy is supposed to be travelling back to uh, Tenerife, and very disappointed that when we arrived, she was just told there's an overbooking situation. And I'm sorry to say, the people here didn't accept any responsibility whatsoever. They tried to pass the buck to the uh, people from whom she bought the ticket in Tenerife. We don't understand why they just don't find out who booked last and tell them they're not going. It's one of those things. It's not that simple. The tour operator responsible is nowhere to be seen. Their passengers are on the flight to Tenerife. The suffering Avro passengers are offered two options, a flight via Madrid or a direct flight in two days' time. To be offered flights on Tuesday when you book to go on a Sunday and you've got a confirmed ticket is frankly not acceptable. I call it a nightmare at the moment. Organising the world's biggest blind date. En route to the airport is 21-year-old Mike Bailey. He's off to Ibiza on a holiday with a difference. He's joining 180 competition winners on the world's biggest blind date, organised by local radio station Key 103. Mike was picked over the airwaves by a girl called Rebecca. She sounded young on the radio, like about 18, 19, so that's a good thing, like, as long as she's not older. So I can be the dominant one. If I don't like this Rebecca, there's going to be another 90 girls I can pick from. So that'll be good. 90 blind date couples, a privately chartered plane, a week in Ibiza. Neither the couples nor the Monarch team know what they're letting themselves in for. You can't have lunch and personality, that doesn't exist in Manchester. <laughs> We're all going to swap. You're yeah, yeah. It might be Mr Perfect, it might not be. It might be Mr Horrible, we don't know yet. We <laughs> think mine is behind us, and if it is, <laughs> what can I say? The original partner's taken ill, so this is my friend. I thought they came to drop someone off, actually. I didn't know they were travelling. She's got a lot of bad habits, yeah. She's a boozer and she's a, a man-eater. <laughs> well, definitely out of my league. <laughs> they do say the older, the more experienced, though. Him over there! Ah! Ah! <laughs> Blue, it. Yeah. Him over there, baseball cap. I saw him when I first came in. He's nice. Mike's arrived, and so has his date, number 39, Rebecca. Now all he's got to do is find her. And what will he think when he does? Can't find her, no one. Oh, there's some people here I really do not want it to be. Oh no, sorry, I'm 36. Thirty thousand feet up, trainee air stewardess Gemma Derns also has love on her mind. I'm going out on a date tonight when I've finished here. I should get home for about five o'clock and I'm um, going out on a date with Carl. Um, Carl's this um, lad that I met on the aircraft about three months ago and then I bumped into him in town about a month ago 
and um, he asked me out. Hello. Are you number three now? Yeah. <laughs> Are you all right? I've been looking for you all the way around there. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Dead nervous. You're dead nervous? Yeah. You're nervous, I'm nervous. Not bad, he'll do. <laughs> well, he's staying up all night last night like that. Oh my god, what's it going to look like? No, it's all right, honestly. Pretty nice. <laughs> George, isn't she? You know what I mean? Look all right, going in pubs with her, wouldn't you? Hey, everyone will be looking at her. Awesome. It's all right, isn't it? Have a good old, you know. Yeah, but have something to look at. Jeez, look at that <laughs> lovely voluptuous lady. Local press are on hand to snap the happy couples, but little does Rebecca know Mike's not quite the dream date he appears. Okay. <laughs> well, if that's the first On the other side of the hall, Andy's still trying to get the passengers to Tenerife. So you're, you're prepared to go on Tuesday? Well, I'm certainly not, because I'm only going for five days. I go on Tuesday, I'll know somebody land and say hello, hello and come straight back. And is, and is you your can't buy, you can't buy and sun is, cream with that smaller bottle. Is, is someone going to offer us an explanation, do you think, as to why this has happened? Uh, yes, as soon as, I mean, they're still trying to find out what has actually happened. Mm -hmm. As soon as I find out, I'll tell you. Unbeknown to the passengers, they have a secret weapon in their midst. This man. Stephen Freudman. I'm a travel agent for my sins, and until very recently I was the uh, president of the Association of British Travel Agents, so I spent my life resolving problems like this. It's unforgivable that they have made this mistake, and I've got to say that uh, if this is reported to ABTA, then the Code of Conduct Committee would, I'm sure, have a look at this and probably would treat it very, very seriously. We're talking serious fines, I mean thousands of pounds, if uh, this is seen to be their responsibility, which clearly on the face of it at the moment does seem to be their responsibility. Luckily, Avro aren't responsible, but that doesn't help Andy, who calls for reinforcements. Rochdale and Gemma's back in good time to get ready. I've had my nails done, I've had my hair done. It takes me about two hours now to get ready for a dirt, because it takes me about an hour to put my makeup on, about half an hour in the bath, and then about half an hour to decide what I'm going to wear. Her mum, Joan, takes a keen interest in her love life. Gemma did have a boyfriend that, um, for about two days that we weren't particularly keen on, but generally, Gemma's boyfriends have been very nice. She's got good taste. The blind date flight is on its way to Ibiza. For trainee steward Nick Robotham, this will be no ordinary flight. I can't, I can't even like get down the aisle without like ragdolling me around. Just, uh, it's, a woman's just trying to make me breastfeed from a that's sat on a seat. She says she's going to get me on the way back, so... In Rochdale, Gemma patiently waits for her boyfriend Carl in her favourite local restaurant. Today is a very important day for Gemma Jones today. She's um, waiting for her boyfriend to arrive. We're going to have a nice, quiet meal. I think Carl will have um, made an effort. I think he'll have been out shopping and bought a new outfit because he, he likes to um, he likes his clothes. Usually they're very nice, out of ten, about ten, <laughs> usually. At last, the man everyone's been waiting for arrives. Nine. Oh, I'm working on a ten. I mean, look at those pants, those ones that you bought. Very special. Let me have a look at your shoes. You want? Let me have a look at your shoes. Look at that, aren't they? Her eyes have lit up, so it must be okay. Tonight, I think Gemma looks really, really nice. Um, she's obviously gone through a lot of effort, and uh, she looks really, really good. Will you start throwing your food all over the table? You've just flicked a chip at me. Oh, you want it? Yeah. <laughs> 
As Carl and Gemma tuck into their food at Manchester Airport, Andy's reinforcements arrive in the form of manager Diane Bruff. Right. Basically, you're all waiting till Tuesday. You three are going tomorrow and you can't go at all. Right, fine, all right, I'll deal with you shortly. OK, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to give you vouchers so for £10 each so you can go and have a drink and a coffee. In the meantime, I'll sort out... Well, we're not going until Tuesday, so we don't need a drink and a coffee. No. <laughs> give me a chance, will <laughs> oh, <sorry. are> you? <laughs> <laughs> Progress for the Tenerife passengers, but a step back for Gemma's love life as she gets a nasty surprise on the way to the loo. I cannot believe that my parents have turned up. I just want, I have never been as embarrassed in all my life. A timely coincidence, or were they spying on Gemma? Oh, no. Would we do that? <laughs> yes, we would, I would. <laughs> <laughs> do they not trust me? Actually, they've decided to come to this restaurant, funnily enough. At the same time? Yeah, at the same time, and they've booked a meal. And I'm terribly sorry. Joan and Frank carry on regardless, while Gemma continues apologising to Carl. In the air, there are celebrations all round as the blind date flight lands in Ibiza. No one's happier than Nick. That was the maddest flight I've ever done in my life. It was just manic. It was so mad. It was people in the aisles constantly. Every time I went down the aisles, somebody would, would pinch my bum and, and, you know, people groping me and things like that. And if I had to take all them back to Manchester, I think I'd end up having a nervous breakdown. I'm happy now that uh, they have accepted responsibility and as we speak, I understand they're searching for an alternative flight, which is what they should have done when they first realised they had a, had a problem on their hands. So we're waiting to hear whether they're going to be successful in finding an alternative flight. You got your luggage there. Avro are sorting things out, and thanks to some skillful diplomacy from Diane, even Stephen's been one round. The point is, we're here to solve your problem and get you out to Tenerife. That's if we right. could have got you out to Tenerife tonight, we would have done. But you should have, your staff should have said that at the outset. And what no, you've just said is first class, but... Yeah. I do apologise again, it wasn't intentional, and I'm sorry you've had to wait, but got you sorted in the end. I'm going to go home, I'm going to spit me dummy out, act like a little petulant little child, and I'm going to go home. I haven't actually told them I'm involved with ABTA. Perhaps they'll find out from this. Diane finally manages to sort out the passengers' arrangements. Mr Griffiths goes home with a full bottle of sun cream and Stephen's friend Lucy opts for the direct flight in two days' time. OK. Right. These are your originals. Diane's left none the wiser about Stephen's true identity. Well, I thought it was Oz Clark from Food and Drink, to be honest. Obviously, I'm wrong. <laughs> In Ibiza, the party's still going strong, and Mike's enjoying himself. Oh, it's awesome, isn't it? Look at your name, that was fucking super stuff. Have you got a license for them? I have, actually. Have you? Yeah. Not all the matchmaking's gone according to plan. Some dates have paired off with the wrong numbers. I was, I was 26. And I was 60. Where's your other, where's the other two? Uh, sat at the bar at work. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where mine is, I've not found him. But was it love at first sight for Mike and Rebecca? He said you'd never been away before. <laughs> Have you? Yeah, really, yeah. Have you? <laughs> yeah. Blood me into so that you've never been away before. Oh, so come on, hold it, you know what I mean? No, because I, I want to be here in a minute. That's what's got me That's in. nasty, that, isn't it? Isn't it right, nasty? Anyway. It's not nasty, <laughs> is it? He's nasty. dead. Rebecca's not the only person Mike's lied to. Mike's engaged to a girl back home. His fiancée, Jenny, has lived with him at his mother's for the past six months. Jenny's just found out about Mike's antics through a full-page story in the Manchester Evening News. When Michael and Rebecca eventually met, both were more than pleased with what they saw, but Presswitch hairdresser Rebecca, 21, did not know her view was a love rat with a girlfriend at home at Warrington. When I read it and saw it, I was so upset, I couldn't believe it. In Ibiza, Mike's in hot water. Last night before I went out, I decided to ring my girlfriend and she said, uh, she had been in the paper. So I said, well, what, what did it say in the paper? Because she sounded really upset, but I was like excited for being in the paper. So she said, uh, it's called your love rat in the paper. That's what it says, you're a love rat and that you, you and her are going get to get it on when you get into Ibiza. He just said that he had to meet a girl at the airport 
to basically to just be on camera and there was nothing else, just to meet the girl at the airport. And that was it, he didn't say anything about a blind date. I couldn't understand why she was upset and then she said, like, that he'd, like, said, I thought, me and that girl are going to get it on when we get here. Mike's outraged by the allegations and discusses the newspaper article with his newfound friends. 21-year-old <laughs> joiner was spending a week in a romantic hotspot with another woman. She will probably kill him. He said. Her blind date was in love. Woody. Woody. Was a love rat with a girlfriend Woody. at home in Warrington. You love rat. <laughs> you love rat. <laughs> can mouthy Mike talk his way out of this one? This is so rubbish what they've away. I cannot believe it. Inside Monarch's head office in Luton is a man on a mission, a pioneer, a man intent on changing the shape of airline catering. Meet modern revolutionary Adrian Chalmers. I'm trying to think the unthinkable because we have square trays and we have square trolleys and we have um, everything is square um, and everyone's always in the past. It couldn't possibly be round. We're talking round plates. It's a plan not without its critics. Rubbish. No. No, somebody's dreaming. You don't really go on a flight and think, oh, I must have a round plate because I have them at home. I mean... <laughs> How weird. <laughs> How bizarre. Adrian believes shape matters, and one simple change will transform airline meals into a gourmet experience. He's cut a rough plate from a plastic bowl, but will it convince head chef Phil Speakman? You've got the same weights there, but with it being on a round plate, <clears throat> looks like you're getting more. It looks bigger, it looks more appetising, and I'd feel like I could eat that more easily than I, I could do before, so I think it looks absolutely fantastic. If it looks appetising, people don't worry about the taste so much. I'm converted, definitely. So far, so good. Just two of you travelling, that's it. No, you haven't got to return ticket and you haven't got anything to prove when you're leaving Spain. We've got tickets to back to Dubai. We've not gone with us. We don't want to carry the tickets to back to Dubai because we're going back here. Right, back in Manchester, now? Supervisor Kay Arrowsmith is breaking some bad news to passengers John and Vienna Cartwright. So, I mean, you can get a return ticket here. For £312. Yeah. Immigration regulations mean as Vienna's travelling on a Filipino passport, she can't enter Spain without a return ticket. They've only got a one-way ticket because they're coming back by train through France, but they need to prove that. So I'm just going to phone Customs Services again and see what they suggest. Okay. This is the first time we've had this problem. We travel, we're going to Penang after this in Malaysia and Koh Samui in Thailand the last two weeks of our holiday. So, you know, but we've never had this problem before. We're just not aware of it. Because maybe the Spanish embassy in Dubai should have told us. But they haven't got a train ticket. Kay gets on the phone for advice from head office in Luton. <laughs> if they buy a return ticket off Monarch, then they can go. Because they, then they can prove when they leave the country. But just going outside and telling him to buy a return ticket, whether he's willing to do that. Yeah. So we'll go and see, shall we? What he wants to do. John and Vienna are understandably reluctant to waste £300 spending money on return tickets. I'll give you that for now. Um, we just want to hang around. Here. Kay decides to try head office one last time. <laughs> what are we going to do? Well, we have to go. So we're going we're gonna to pay the money, if we have to. Luton, and there are more passport problems. Modern revolutionary Adrian Chalmers plans to test drive his round plates on this Alicante flight, but there's one problem. Well, Mr Chalmers unfortunately has forgotten his passport. He is about ten minutes away from the airport, or that was five minutes ago, so hopefully he'll be here. We are three, and it's... Mr Chalmers, can I have your passport, please, as well? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Coming to Alicante, not getting off the aircraft, just completely forgot to bring it with me this morning. So, no other excuse. Well, I'm glad you've arrived. <laughs> the idea today is to show this to some of our passengers and to say, would you like to have your food off around plates as you would normally have it at home? It's time for the big test. What will the public make of Adrian's round plates plan? All airlines mostly have them like now, that's, that's so that would be yeah. nice for change. Yeah. What do you think? Do you think that's a, yes, a, a forward step? Yes, well, it would be different. The public seem convinced, but will the round plates make it into the air? There are lots of people who think it can't be done, um, but I would say that um, 
watch this space. I think that there is potential there, and yes, we can achieve it. Back in Manchester, it's good news. Right, it's okay. Yeah? Yeah, I said it was okay. Customer services have been advised by Spanish immigration that the Cartwrights don't need the return tickets after all. So, two lots of good news. <laughs> it's all smiles for John and Vienna, or is it? Okay. As they go off to the boarding gate, a telex arrives from Spanish immigration. We've just got a telex now from Spain at Luton saying they won't accept her without a return ticket. So they've changed their minds, but we've already checked her in, so we need to... Um... Do you want to do it this way? I've got the tickets. You've got the return tickets. Kay radios ahead to the gate, and there's a last-minute dash to catch them. The problem's resolved once and for all. The Cartwrights part with £312 for tickets they won't use as they're coming back by train. No, I understand, but, you know, it's all major disaster. He seems remarkably relaxed, but that's because he's been told he can get a full refund for the tickets. Yeah, in one hand and out the other. <laughs> no, you can not tell. Okay. Yeah, okay. Thank no you. Just put him up where it comes from. See ya. It's a happy ending, wasn't it, in the end? It's the end of a free holiday for Mike, and time to face the girlfriend. We could be dreading seeing us. He's only spoke to us on phone, hasn't he? You could don't know. Uh, it might be. You might think I'm going to get my claws in. <laughs> oh, he's got his sarong on. I'll just tell you. It can. He's having his sarong on. <laughs> Mum gets the first kiss. But what about Jenny? He's got away with it. Or has he? <laughs> Girlfriend's happy, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she is anyway. It does look a little bit weary, doesn't it? Dead when you get home. Hey. Dead when you get home. Oh, I. Did she say dead when you get home? Dead when you get home. Oh, I. For once, Mouthy Mike's got nothing to say.